Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below. And go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm always looking to improve. Today I'm going to be looking at another Kurtzkazat video that was requested called What Did Dinosaurs Actually Look Like? Let's take a look. The past is a vast and mysterious land that begins at the Big Bang and ends in the present, expanding with each passing moment. It's the home of everything that came before, the key to understanding our present. Here, we find the most amazing creatures to ever roam our planet. Hundreds of millions of species so diverse that our imagination cannot do them justice. Unfortunately, the past carefully got... Swear every one of those, the transitions and the animations get better and better. These guys are awesome. To ...its secrets. While there are a lot of things about the past we know, there are way more things we know we don't know. And worse, there are probably even more things we don't even know that we don't know about. Think of the wonder of life. We now recognize about 1.5 million eukaryotic species, but there may be as many as 10 million alive today. And wow. although we are adding some 15,000 new species to our collective knowledge each year, the vast majority of life on Earth is still undiscovered. This is just what is around today. An estimated... F That's just fascinating to me, because it's like, okay, the Earth, we've been here for however many thousands of years cataloging stuff, but... Yeah, I guess just being able to see and catalog all these new species, it just takes time. Four billion species emerged on our planet in past eons. But at least 99% of them died out way yep. before humans spoke the first words. The vast majority of all the different species that ever existed are so utterly deleted that they have become part of the unknown, unknown part of the past, lost to us forever. Or are they? That's true, they might have been fully decayed away. Could we use science and imagination to glimpse a shadow of the unreachable past? Let's start with what we do know. To learn about creatures of the past, we need fossils. Any sort of remains preserved from past geological ages. Bones or shells, impressions or imprints, things preserved in amber. The totality of all fossils on Earth is called the fossil record, and it's the most important window on the past we'll ever have. For a dead animal to fossilize, a number of things must go just right. The right environment, timing, and conditions. And then the fossil needs to survive for millions or hundreds of millions of years, and then get back to the surface, and then... So fossilization in general is pretty rare, is what they're saying. Okay. ...be discovered before natural processes dissolve it. So it is kind of a miracle that we have what we have, and know what we know take the dinosaurs, since they were one of the largest and most successful groups of animals for some 165 million years, and are also a lot of fun to animate. What were they really like, and what are we missing? In the last 200 years, we've found tens of thousands of fossils from over 1,000 dinosaur species. Lately, we've entered a golden era of discovery, and about 50 new dinosaur species are discovered each year, expanding what we know and what we know that we don't know about them, which is amazing. But it also makes us aware of all the things lost to the past forever. Imagine if we took all the animals that lived in the last 50 million years and randomly chose 10,000 individuals from 1,000 species to fossilize. Think about all the things that would be missed or that seem too weird to be true. Like the giraffe, a yellow animal with brown patterns that looks like a horse and an antelope had a baby with a long neck and two tiny hairy horns. How many dinosaur giraffes were there? Animals so weird and selected for ecological niches so specific that evolution molded their bodies very absurdly. Crazy. Today they might seem made up to us. We know a lot of species are lost forever, 
just because of the environment they lived in. For example, lush jungles basically prevent fossilization as the chances that an animal will be buried here are low. Countless scavengers of all sizes break down freshly deceased animals extremely quickly and the soil is often so acidic that bones are dissolved. And so fossils of dinosaurs from jungles are practically non-existent. Today, half of all known species live in the few remaining rainforests that only cover 2% of Earth's landmass. Millions of years ago, when dinosaurs roamed Earth, jungles covered much more of the planet. That's true, yeah, because you got to take into account the shape of and the environment of the Earth now, because with continental drift, everything looked so much different back then. Wow. So, besides some insects and other small animals trapped in amber, there should be millions of species that emerged and vanished without leaving any trace. Trapped deep inside the unknown unknown. But just in general, biology trips us up. Look at your body. It's mainly squishy, gooey, soft stuff, which does not preserve well. What remains the longest are the crystallized parts of your bones, and so most dinosaur fossils are bones or teeth, usually fragments, not entire skeletons. This means that almost all boneless or shellless animals are practically wiped from the fossil record. If we take a look at the stunning diversity of weird animals like worms, jellyfish and slugs alive today, we can only speculate what we are missing. Although thankfully, many mostly soft and gooey species also left us an incredible diversity of shells that tell us an amazing amount about our past, so at least we have that. Still, when we think about all the boneless species that may have existed in the last half billion years, even our best attempt at imagining them falls short. But it's not like reimagining something based on its bones is straightforward, and so the way we envisage what dinosaurs actually looked like has changed a lot in the last few years. In the past, many illustrations had a bony, minimalistic look with a toothy grin to signify fierceness and danger. But if we draw today's animals in a similar way, based on their skeletons, just for the fun of it, we get the most bizarre creatures. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Elephants, swans, and baboons that look like monsters right out of nightmares. So, similar to animals today, we should imagine dinosaurs with much more soft tissue, fat bellies or chests, weird soft parts like skin flaps, lips and gums, and just more pronounced features that would make them seem like much more pleasant fellows. Some soft features actually leave distinctive traces on bones that we can look for in the skeletons of extinct animals, which is where today's animals with similar features are really helpful. It's a similar story with colors. I know the whole thing about feathers was a relatively new phenomena that, and by relatively, I mean before, say, the first Jurassic Park movie came out where there were all these monsters they were depicted, and now it's like, oh, they're just birds, but bigger, more or less. Because we know what the feathers of living birds look like, modern technology combined with the exceedingly rare fossils with preserved remains of fuzzy feathers give us a glimpse of the real colors of extinct dinosaurs. We know that tiny Sinosauropteryx had a striped tail and its tiny dino buddy Anchionis huxley was white and black with gorgeous red feathers around its head. Still, for the vast majority of really any ancient extinct species, we have no real clue what color they were. But we know what modern dinosaurs, birds, look like, and here we find the most amazing variety. So some dinosaurs will have tried to blend into the background, while others might have fielded aggressive color schemes to attract mates or to appear dangerous. Some might have had impressive decorations or colorful beaks. Some may have been striped or patterned. Similarly, we don't know that much about dinosaur behavior, although once again, we can draw conclusions from existing animals. For example, even apex predators like lions spend a lot of their time lying around and cuddling and licking each other and playing. Why would dinosaurs be so different? When we first found the skull of T-Rex with its mighty teeth and probably the strongest bite of any land animal ever, we imagined a fierce and stupid beast. But modern scanning technology has revealed that T-Rex had a larger brain-to-body ratio than some earlier giant meat-eaters and it probably had very sharp hearing, vision, and a sense of smell, and was in all likelihood not a stupid animal. So maybe T-Rex was a cuddly fellow that spent a lot of time playing around or impressing potential mates when it was not hungry. 
Likewise, while their horns and shields might have made ceratopsids appear to be natural-born fighters, they were probably much more than that. Based on the behavior of modern animals and the complex dances some have to go through to mate, maybe their shields were amazingly colorful. Maybe it danced for its mates like many birds do today. How intensely amazing these creatures must have been. And what a loss it is to us that we don't get to experience them firsthand. That is just interesting to note that. It's like, hey, scary-looking skeletons, they must be this violent creature. Not just 100% human nature to always assume, you know, to always bite on to the fear that's immediate and lock your mind into thinking that way. And now it's such a trope, the uh, dangerous T-Rex or the uh, aggressive... Um, fighting Triceratops or Stegosaurus. Um, <laughs> we're probably completely wrong about all that stuff. <laughs> even greater loss that there is so much we will never know about them, and even more tragic, all the absurd and beautiful beings that disappeared without a trace. But such is life. Time marches on without any concern for our feelings, and the past <laughs> expands with every moment that passes. Most wild animals alive today will in all likelihood not leave fossils behind and also just disappear forever. We can do something about that though. Instead of accelerating the extinction we are witnessing, we could become the guardians of life and preserve it where we find it. If possible in the wild, if not then in museums, movies and in our minds. Because as amazing as our imagination is, and as fascinating to think about the animals that are part of the unknown unknown, it is even better to witness them in the present. The land that we actually inhabit, where we get to experience life as it happens. There is one more exciting way to experience dinosaurs though this year. The 12,020... Wow, that is a beautifully well done transition for their ad, but... Anyway, that was a... I learned a whole lot in that. I didn't... I don't know much about dinosaurs as a nuclear engineer, but... Yeah, knowing that there is so much that we don't that we don't know and so much that we'll never know about. It, it makes sense, but it's, I guess, all the more reason to uh, appreciate what we have now and the fossil records that we do have. That's really cool. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.